Nikome pi daritka. Nikome hi gani ki juere nu tachi niki. Tunam pi hakira je ki. Edmund Ida Hamine ki. I'm Kanitha Greenwood and I just greeted you in my Ocho Missouri language. And I said my name is Nik Omi. Uh, Ni is water. K o is the sound that the water makes when it hits the rocks. And that's the name my great grandmother gave me when I was about seven. And uh, it means roaring water. So um, I also said I'm Ota Missouri. I'm Bear Clan. And I'm from Edmond, Oklahoma. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my tribe's history, where we came from, and uh, where we are today, and some things in between. So um, the Ocho Missouri are a Siouan tribe and they migrated from the Great Lakes area in the north. Um, they were at one time one big tribe with the Oto, the Missouri, the Iowa, and the Ho-Chunk. And um, they were all one big tribe, but as they migrated south, they uh, kind of broke off into their own tribe, tribal groups. So um, during this time, contact with Europeans through uh, trade brought um, things, new diseases such as smallpox, and uh, it practically decimated the Oto and Missouri tribe both, and other, other tribes as well. But the Missouri tribe in particular was lost a lot of people to both uh, disease and warfare. So in the late 1700s, um, with few people remaining, they joined back up with the Otos because there's a greater uh, protection with uh, bigger numbers in your tribe. So ever since then, they've been one tribe, uh, the Oto Missouri. Um, the Ota Missouri were a woodlands tribe, meaning they lived in the forested areas. Uh, they were hunters and gatherers, and they grew and harvested corn and beans and squash. And uh, this was intended to supplement their diet of wild game, such as uh, bison and deer and things like that. And for the most part, they lived in villages and uh, bark houses, but they also utilized teepees, uh, mostly when they would hunt game, because uh, the teepees were easy to take up. and take down quickly and follow the game uh, that they were hunting. So the buffalo provided much of what they needed and uh, none of it went to waste. Um, moving ahead to the summer of 1804, uh, near present day Sioux City, Nebraska, um, the Ota Missouri was the first tribe to meet with Lewis and Clark and I'll talk about more about that in a later video. But um, during this time, President Jefferson was uh, letting the tribes know that the land that he acquired during the Louisiana Purchase uh, now belong to the United States and so the tribes and their ancestors that had nurtured and cultivated that land uh, for years now belong to the U.S. So over the years um, after meeting with Lewis and Clark settlers started to encroach on um, the Ota Missouri's rich farmland and um, they began settling in their ter territory. So when the Ota Missouri tried to uh, protect their homelands and themselves the United States took action on behalf of the settlers and they forcibly removed the Ota Missouri tribe to the Big Blue Reservation in southeast Nebraska. Once um, they were on the reservation, life was extremely difficult for them. Uh, they suffered as treaties were broken, um, promises of food, medicine, livestock, and uh, basic essentials that you needed to survive were not delivered as, as they were promised. Um, they weren't allowed to leave the reservation um, to get provisions for themselves and so um, things like hunting buffalo and things like that so uh, they were basically prisoners and uh, sickness was rampant children starved elders um, starved and many of the tribal members died so after years of suffering um, a group of Ota Missouri called the Coyote Band there was about 160 of them they escaped the Big Blue Reservation and went to Indian Territory which is now um, Oklahoma uh, they escaped the reservation and went to stay with other tribes in Indian Territory. But conditions for the remaining tribal members that stayed on Big Blue, um, conditions really worsened for them. So in 1881, a procession of 320 Ota Missouri left for um, Indian Territory, which is now known as Red Rock, Oklahoma. And it's located in the northern part of Oklahoma, just south of the Kansas and Oklahoma border. Um, this land um, was purchased by uh, the remaining land that was left of the Big Blue Reservation, so they had to purchase their land in Indian Territory. And uh, once they returned to um, Oklahoma, the Coyote Band found their way back to their people and they were reunited with the tribe once again. But once they were in Oklahoma Territory, the hardships um, didn't end for them. 
Um, the land continued to be taken from them, uh, broken into parcels and surplus for uh, settlers and uh, railroad development as well. So the Oto Missouri children were also taken from their homes and put into government boarding schools, sometimes as young as the age of five. And um, once they were there, they were punished for speaking their language, um, practicing their way of life, unable to return home for years at a time, and uh, forced to leave, live through unspeakable circumstances. So imagine you being that young and taken away from everything you know, your family, your parents, your grandparents, your community, and you're not allowed to um, speak your language, which sometimes was the only language they knew. Uh, your clothing was changed, your hair was cut. Um, so you can imagine the um, historic trauma that was caused by this, um, by breaking bonds with their family and community and their culture. So this created, created a stigma so that the language and uh, cultural ways weren't passed on to the children in fear that they would be punished. So in less than 85 years, um, the Otobazura tribe had much of their language and culture, way of life decimated. But through it all, um, we held on to what, what we had and it was passed down to us and the Ocho Missouri survived and today we have approximately 3,300 tribal members and they perpetuate and hold strong um, to their tribal beliefs and have that have been handed down through um, generations through feasts, dances, um, gatherings and their songs and uh, we come together for an annual encampment every third weekend in July uh, to celebrate and continue the lineage to our families and our clans and our tribal ties and um, the language is also in the process of um, revitalization and this is with the help of language that was documented documented not only by missionaries and um, agents but we have a lot of recordings of our elders that we hold, hold on to dearly because we don't have any um, fluent speakers left so uh, we use a lot of uh, recordings of our elders speaking to help revitalize our language today and um, it's because of uh, the resilient perseverance of our ancestors and we acknowledge the hardships that they endured and um, it's because of them that we're able to strive and prosper as Ocho Missouri people today. Wadi Kiki. Ocho